effort in the end, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to lose to the San Francisco 49ers. 27-14, to the Buccaneers drop to a 4-6 and record. San Francisco 49ers move up to a 7-3 and record. And, you know, man, they're... Yeah, I mean, there's a, there was a lot to this game. There was a lot to this game. Um, there was some good and just a lot of just iffy kind of things. So let's just kind of go ahead and break it down. Kind of kind of dive into it a little bit. Let's take a look at the Buccaneers stats here. Baker Mayfield was 29 of 45, 246 yards, one touchdown, one interception. This is a big thing for me here. Sacked four times for... 25 yards. A couple of those came at the end of the game as well. But one thing that that was notable was that Baker Mayfield did have a couple of dropped interceptions this game. A um, couple of dropped touchdown passes that we'll talk about later. All in all, in my opinion, it was a pretty average game from Baker, all things considered. I mean, throwing the football 45 times. Baker did make some good throws. Had some throws he probably would have liked back. Also, the offensive line... Um, definitely gave up a lot of pressure on Mayfield today, but that was to be expected, just given, you know, Nick Bosa, Chase Young, all the different types of guys that they have. Um, it was an up-and-down game for Mayfield, I would say pretty average, all things considered. Um, there were there was some good, there was some bad, it was what it was. Rashad White, nine carries for 30 yards and a touchdown. Not a terrible game from the running game, all things considered. They did kind of go down early, where I guess I, I should say, you know, it was 13-7 to 7 at the start of the first half. I would have I really would have just liked to have seen them stay with the run more to start off the second half. They didn't didn't really do that. Um, the run game was actually, you know, you saw some creativity at the start of the second half or at the end of the first half. I wish we would have seen more of that throughout the, the second half of the game. But Rashad White had a touchdown. I'm going to give him credit for that. Devin Tompkins had a nice end around. Chase, Edmund, uh, Chase Edmonds had a couple of interesting moments. Uh, Baker Mayfield also did have the fumble, which is important to note. It did result in a 49ers field goal. So, just some interesting things there. Kate Otten had five targets today, led the way with 49 receiving yards. Mike Evans had 12 targets, 43 yards, and a touchdown. Rakeem Jarrett had one catch for 41 yards. Shout out to Rakeem Jarrett. Godwin had eight targets, six catches for 39 yards. Just wish that we could have seen Evans and Godwin get worked more in the deep passing game. But it was what it was. You know, a lot of different guys getting a lot of different opportunities here. So, like, look at the receiving list, right? Kate Otten, Mike Evans, Rakeem Jarrett, Chris Godwin, Rashad White, Trey Palmer, Payne Durham was in there. Chase Edmonds got a, got a look. On a screen, a couple of the screen games actually worked really well for the Bucks in this game. And even Devin Tompkins got a target. This is what I wanted to talk about. Kate Otten had a drop touchdown, and so did Devin Tompkins. That was painful. Um, didn't single-handedly lose them the game. Of course not, right? But it certainly didn't help later in the game whenever you were trying to come back and win. Does that kind of cancel out that Baker Mayfield dropped interceptions? I don't know. That's subjective. It, it can kind of depend. It, it, it depends on how you want to view that. So we, we had some missed opportunities in terms of dropped touchdowns and some dropped Baker interceptions on some poor throws. It just, it was what it was, you know, it was just some missed opportunities there and what, what could have been a, a winnable game for sure. Antoine Winfield Jr. led the way with 16 total tackles. Levante David actually left the game with a groin injury. We have no update on that. One sack, three tackles for loss, one quarterback hit. Shaq Barrett had a tackle for loss. Yaya Diaby went kind of crazy today. Two sacks, three tackles for loss, two quarterback hits. I think he, in my opinion, I think he's going to be getting more of a starting look over Joe Tryon Shawinka moving forward, and that's probably the right move. Vita Vea had a sack, two tackles for loss, and a quarterback hit. That was kind of it. The defense kind of struggled today. We're going to talk about that more whenever we look at Brock Purdy stats, but the secondary just kind of got got eaten up in this game. I mean, they really did. Um, in a lot of different ways, just Brock Purdy threw all, threw all over the yard. Chase McLaughlin made his kicks. That was good. He uh, he was able to make his his two extra points there. 
didn't really kick any field goals or anything like that. Jake Kamara had a pretty decent day punting the football. But I think offensively, like, moving the ball wasn't necessarily the issue. If we take a look at team stats, you know, the Buccaneers were converting on third down. They were 7-14. of That's good enough to win you a football game. 287 yards to the 49ers. 420, you know, not great. But offensively, I feel like they moved the football okay enough. It's just a couple of drop touchdowns, a couple of bad throws by by Baker. It was an average performance by this offense to, let's say, below average when you needed them to play great, let's say, or good. They didn't do so today. So an average performance wasn't enough. Defensively, Brock Purdy, 333 yards, three touchdowns, sacked four times, which that's good. Hyper-efficient, 21 of 25. McCaffrey did a honestly was kept in check all things considered 21 carries for 78 yards i think the run defense was good enough but kittle 89 yards and a touchdown brandon Ayuk, 156 yards and a touchdown i mean jamal dean got cooked for a touchdown along a 76 yard touchdown longest touchdown of the year and he got hurt on the play no update on that as well it didn't look pretty the jamal dean injury Carlton Davis kind of calmed down as the game went on. The sec- I will say the secondary did kind of calm down, like let's say in the fourth quarter. But first three quarters, you give up so much yardage, so many different um, opportunities there. It just wasn't good. The pass deflections were nuts from the 49ers defense. Two, four, six, nine, ten, eleven, eleven passes defended. Part of that was from the line of scrimmage. Part of that was just good good secondary play. Eight quarterback hits for the 49ers. Four sacks. I mean, Baker Mayfield was getting swarmed in this game. He was. Part of that was was to that as well. You even saw Tristan Wirfs give up some pressure throughout the game there. It was was a rough game for the offense. Just anywhere you want to look, there was some sparks in there from the rushing attack from... Devin Tompkins and Trey Palmer and whatnot. There was some good plays in there, like a Rakeem Jarrett long ball pass, but just the whole offense was was mediocre in this game today, and that wasn't enough. It wasn't. It just the just the whole team was was too. They just played like an average football team today. Did they play downright awful? No, there were some good moments here and there, but it was just an average looking football team going and losing to a good football team in the 49ers just just point blank that's that's kind of the way to boil it down man I mean whatever you want to look at like the offense could have done more the defense could have done a little bit more the secondary could have done more um that's just kind of the way to look at this game right I don't think that it was one specific guy's fault like was it just Baker Mayfield's fault no was it just the defense's fault no Just the whole team was average in this game. The whole team was. And wasn't enough to win. Just point blank. They didn't play as a complete team. They didn't take advantage of the opportunities that they did get. Which, you know, made this a winnable game towards the end there. And they just weren't able to take advantage of it. Especially offensively at the end. Was was a bit difficult with Baker getting sacked and... Guys dropping touchdowns and some dropped interceptions here and there. It was just, a, it was a rough go, man. It was a rough go. So, you know, I mean, that that is kind of it. It's four and six right now are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to have to see how they rebound from this. I will say this. I don't think the season's over. People are going are gonna to say that. You're still only one game behind the San, Fran- or the, the San Francisco 49ers, the New Orleans Saints. And you're now tied with the Atlanta Falcons. And you have a pretty favorable schedule moving up throughout the remainder of the year. We talked about this game being a tough game. We we talked about that Jacksonville Jaguars game was going to be a tough game, right? What's going to be important is your two games against the Panthers. Your two games, one against the, the Saints and one against the Falcons. Your game against the Colts that you have next week. There's another winnable game in there as well against the Green Bay Packers. Those six games are going to help determine how the rest of the season goes. You have to win majority of those games 
say four out of those six games. You know, a lot of people kind of had an expectation of what this game was going to be. Now, how do you rebound from it? How do you look like a more complete team moving forward? What do you learn from this game? What do you pull from this game positively to rebound from this 4-6 and six record and make a push for that NFC South title? That is going to be the question there. And we're going to have to wait and see. But uh, man, oh man, a tough loss for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to have to wait and see if they rebound moving forward.